Let's take a look at this problem, taken from the Asian Pacific Mathematical Olympia 2013. It says, find all positive integers n such that n squared plus 1 over the floor function on square root of n whole squared plus 2 is also an integer. Before we move on, don't forget to give a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on post notifications. This is um, an approachable problem to me because to me the only obstacle in, to simplify the, the given expression is to rewrite this part, the floor function of the square root of n. So the most straightforward way to do this is to simply let m equals the floor function of square root of n and then and let a equals n minus this thing squared and we can see that this should be a small number because the floor function of square root of n should be a number that is very close to n difference is less than one and then even if we square it we still have a kind of a small integer noting that this should be an integer and square is also integer and n is also an integer here so now the given expression becomes a plus m squared whole squared plus 1 over m squared plus 2, which is an more obviously a much more approachable and easy expression. So we expand it. And of course, we can do some uh, long division because we can see the numerator and denominator as polynomials about m with degree 4 and 2 on both sides. So we can do some long division and we will have m squared plus 2a minus 2 because we know that m squared plus 2 times m squared plus 2a minus 2 will at least give us m to the 4 plus 2a m squared and something else that we can um, combine with a squared plus 1. So we add a fraction which is a squared plus 1 minus the remaining constant term, so-called constant, okay, which means that it's unrelated to m that's 2 times 2a minus 2, and we simplify. And the numerator becomes this. Because the left-hand side, which means the given expression, is an integer, that is our condition, And of course, m squared plus 2a plus minus 2 is also an integer. We know that this expression, which can be rewritten as a minus 2 whole square plus 1 over m squared plus 2, is also an integer. Now, having reached this point, I'm going to rewrite, I'm going to set up the relation between a and m, is that notice that there is actually a bound on the square root of n, which is that it's of course greater than m, but at the same time, it cannot exceed m plus 1. Okay, so we found two integers that um, Two consecutive, two consecutive integers so that the floor function of square root of n is between them. Now I'm going to square both sides. m squared plus 2m plus 1. And of course, I'm going to um, subtract by m squared on all parts so that the middle part becomes a. So I can replace this by a. And now I have a bound 
on A that is related to M. So I have to study the bound of A minus 2 whole squared. So it's obviously at least um, 0, which is actually not important. And this part is less than or equal to the maximum of 2n minus 1 whole squared and 4. Just in case that 2n minus 1 whole squared is not even equal to 4. And we know that there is a natural upper bound of 4 because um, we're minusing by 2 and 0 minus 2 whole squared is, already, is 4 already. So we know that a minus 2 whole squared plus 1 over m squared plus 2 must be less than or equal to 2m minus 1 whole squared plus 1 over m squared plus 2. And this is less than or equal to should be less than or equal to but less than less than 4 because I'm going to elaborate a bit 4m squared minus 4m plus 2 over m squared plus 2 and this clearly cannot exceed 4 cannot even be equal to 4 must be less than 4 so now we have come to finitely many possibilities which is which is that this expression can only be 1, 2, or 3. So I'm going to divide into um, three cases, which is that case 1 is that a minus 2 whole squared plus 1 equals m squared plus 2. And so a minus 2 whole squared minus m squared is 1. And if we have um, different squares to be um, just one, then we only have one possible solution is that a minus 2 is plus or minus 1, and in particular, a must be 0. But in that case, this number has to be 0, and it's actually impossible because square roots of n the floor function of square root of n is at least 1, so there's a contradiction. And we take a look at case 2, which is um, the fraction is equal to 2, and so we simplify, and we get this. Now I'm going to take mod 3 on both sides, and I'm going to get a minus 2 whole squared plus m squared is going to 0 mod 3 because the coefficient minus 2 um, here becomes plus 1 when I take mod 3. Now I have square uh, sum of two squares is congruent to 0 mod 3, and so that forces to be both 0. Now in that case, then a minus 2 whole squared and m squared are both 0 mod 9. But this would contradict with this statement, this line, because that difference is exactly 3. And so right hand side would then be congruent to 3 mod 9, not 0 mod 9. So again, a contradiction. Now the final case is that a minus 2 whole squared plus 1 equals 3m squared plus 6. And this is even easier because when I take mod 3 on both sides, left hand side becomes a minus 2 whole squared only, while right hand side becomes minus 1 mod 3, which is um, not possible, even more obvious. So actually, to conclude, we actually have no solution, which means this expression, n squared plus 1 over the square of the floor, func uh, floor function of square root n plus 2 can never be an integer. So yay, we are done. I hope you enjoyed the video. 
feel free to suggest any alternatives in the comments. If you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. Thank you for your support. See you next time.